Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 30. In this video, we're going to learn about multiplying fractions. All right, so the lesson objective for today is just to learn how to multiply two or more fractions together. I'm going to give you an initial procedure and then I'm going to modify it slightly. We're going to start doing something called cross canceling, and that's going to allow us to simplify while we're doing the multiplication problem so that we don't have to simplify after. But let me give it to you this way first, and then we'll do the modification. So to multiply two or more fractions, you're going to multiply the numerators together, and then you're going to place the result over the product of the denominators. And I have here, we wanna simplify, but we're gonna change this up a little bit as we work through the problems. Now, before we get started, let me give you a brief explanation in terms of why we do this as the numerator times the numerator over the denominator times the denominator, and then we simplify. So let's suppose that I start off with a pizza and I'm gonna split this up into four equal slices. So each slice will be one fourth of the pizza. So let's say this is one, two, three, and then four slices. Suppose that I eat a slice of this pizza for breakfast and then another one for lunch, and then a final one for dinner. So how much of the pizza did I eat? Three fourths. How much of the pizza is left? One fourth. So we know that at this point. But how could I have gotten that three fourths? I would have said that, well, I ate one, two, three, so I could just count pieces of pizza out of a total of four equal pieces of pizza that were available in this whole amount. So I could have said that this is one fourth, that's me eating at breakfast, plus one fourth, that's me eating at lunch, plus one fourth, that's me eating at dinner. So this should give me three fourths. Now, we're not going to really talk too much about adding fractions here. This is something we'll cover later on. It's a little bit complicated, but basically if you have the same denominator, so here you have a four, a four, and a four, what you do is you keep that denominator the same and you just add the numerators. So you see that this is one plus one plus one. So my one slice from breakfast plus my one slice from lunch, plus my one slice from dinner, that one plus one plus one, that gives me three slices that I ate out of a total of four slices in that whole pizza. So now that we understand that we should get three fourths from one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth, what we can do is transform this into a related multiplication statement. Remember, if you have something like, let's say three times five, this is going to be five plus five plus five. So either way, whether you do the multiplication from the multiplication tables or from the repeated addition here, you're going to get 15. So the same thing should be true here. If I write this as three, because I have one, two, three of these guys, times one fourth, I should get three fourths. And how would we do that? Well, you could write three as three over one. Three divided by one is going to be three. So I haven't changed anything. And then you could just multiply the numerators together. Three times one would give me three. And then you could put that over the product of the denominators. So one times four would give me four. So that's how you would get three fourths. So you'll see me say, we wanna multiply the numerators together, put this over the product of the denominators. All right, let me give you another example here because it's not gonna be that straightforward when you see something like, let's say one half times one fourth. Well, what in the world does this mean if you try to translate it into repeated addition? We saw that when we had three times one fourth, this became one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth if we write it as a repeated addition. But if I write one half times one fourth, well, I don't have three of these. What I want is one half of this. So basically it's like saying I want one half of one fourth. So I have this first pizza, which is cut into four equal slices. What we're gonna actually have to do is take this one fourth. Let me just mark this off right here. So this would be one fourth of the pizza. And let me do this over here. Now this guy is cut into eight equal slices. So let me mark this off. What you're gonna have to do if you say that you want one half of something, well, you need to cut it into two equal parts. So I'm gonna slice this guy. Let me use a different color here. I'm gonna slice this guy right here. And I want one out of those two equal parts. So I want this slice right here. Let me count these up. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I want one slice out of a total of eight equal slices. So this would give me one eighth. Because basically I'm starting with one fourth of this whole amount, so one piece out of a total of four equal pieces, and I'm saying, hey, give me half of that. So it's kind of like I got this slice and I said, okay, well, we need to split it. So we split it like this, or I cut it in half, 
And now, how much do I have? Well, I have one piece out of eight pieces now, instead of having one piece out of four pieces. So this becomes the fraction one eighth. Now, when you look at it, again, it's the same procedure. Multiply the numerators, one times one would give me one, and then put this over, you're gonna multiply the denominators, two times four would give me eight. So one half times one fourth would give me one eighth. All right, let's take a look at some examples. So you'll find this process to be very, very easy. We have two fifths times one seventh. So just following the procedure, we're gonna multiply the numerators together. So two times one would give me two. We're gonna place that over. We're gonna multiply the denominators together. So five times seven would be 35. Now two is a prime number and 35, we just saw that came from five times seven. Five is a prime number and seven is a prime number. So really there's nothing here that I can cancel, right? The GCF is gonna be one. So we would say the simplified answer here is two over 35. All right, so here's one that's gonna be a little bit tricky. So first let's use our procedure. So we have three tenths times five twelfths. I'm gonna multiply numerator times numerator. So three times five is 15. This is over denominator times denominator. So 10 times 12, that's 120. Okay, well, here is the problem. You see that this guy right here is the correct answer, 15 over 120, but it's not simplified. So if you report an answer and it's a fraction and it's not simplified, your teacher will probably at minimum take points off. Some of them will mark it wrong. It just depends on your teacher. So what you'd actually have to do is factor this and you're going and undoing what you just did, right? So 15, you're going back to three times five. And let me make that three a little bit better. And then for 120, if I break that down completely, 10 is gonna be five times two, and then 12 is four, which is two times two, and then times three. Let me extend that a little bit. Now we know how to simplify fractions already. Basically, I'm looking at the numerators and the denominators, and I'm seeing what's common. So I can cancel this with this, three divided by three is one. Now I would advise you at this point to put a one there, a lot of people will leave it off. It just depends on your preference. Some teachers will make you do it. Some teachers will tell you to put a one there and put a one there. And some teachers will say it doesn't matter. But the thing is, when you look at this one, I'm gonna cancel this five with this five. So I'm gonna put a one here and a one here. Now, if your scratch work looks like this, let's say you get rid of all of this stuff. Well, the problem is the temptation for most students, they're gonna say, okay, there's nothing in the numerator. I've canceled everything away. So they write a zero. Really, it's a one right? Because three divided by three was one and five divided by five was one. So that's why if you put a little one there as a reminder, you can say, okay, well, I need to multiply one by one. That's going to give me one. And this is over two times two times two. That's going to be eight. So remember, it's just like I did the problem three over three times five over five times one over, let's say two times two times two, that's going to be eight. This is exactly going to give me the same answer as this. What happens is three over three is one, right? So I can just say this is one. Five over five, that's one. So it's one times one times one eighth, which is one eighth. So this is the correct answer. You don't want to put a zero up there. Okay, let me get rid of this. When we look at what we did, we double worked, right? First we multiplied, then we had to factor and break the multiplication back up, and then we canceled. What we actually want to do is cancel before we multiply. And this process is called cross canceling. So to do this, you first wanna look at your fractions and see, can I simplify them? So 3 tenths can't do anything there, 5 twelfths can't do anything there. So once you're out of options there, you wanna look at the numerator of this fraction, let's just say the left fraction, and the denominator of the right fraction. So this numerator and this denominator. And then you're gonna do the same thing. Let me change my highlighter color here. So then this numerator, and this denominator. And you're just gonna ask the question, can I cancel any common factors between this numerator and this denominator or this numerator and this denominator? Basically, are there any common factors between any numerator and any denominator? That's what you're asking. So to make this easier to see, I'm just gonna break it down like we had it. So I'm gonna put three over, we know 10 is five times two, and then times, I'm gonna put five over, 12 is two times two times three. This three can cancel with this three. So this numerator and this denominator, there's a common factor of three. Again, I would put a one here. You can even put a one here if you want for clarity. You don't need it, but you can put it. Then here, you look at this numerator and this denominator, you can cancel this five with this five. Again, you can put a one here and a one here. And then when you go through and multiply, well, one times one would give you one. And this would be over. Let me make that a little bit better there. You would have Again, you can think about this as one times two or just two because one times anything is just itself. So really it's just two times two times two, 
which is going to be 8. Again, this 1 would not change anything if you multiplied by it. So you end up with 1 eighth, which is the simplified answer. And notice that we didn't have to double work. We went ahead and canceled before we did the multiplication. So once we get our product, it's already simplified. All right, now that we understand the procedure, let me go a little bit quicker through the process. So we have 9 over 20 times 5 over 33. So I can't simplify this and I can't simplify this. Now, you could continue to do this and break it down all the way. So you could say this is 3 times 3 over 20 is 5 times 2 times 2. And then times you have 5 over 33 is 3 times 11. You can do it this way. And then, again, I can just look at this numerator and this denominator. So let's cancel this 3 with this 3. Again, you could put a 1 here if you want and a 1 here if you want, just as a mental reminder. And then you can cancel between this numerator and this denominator, this 5 with this 5. So let's put a 1 here and a 1 here. All right, so this would give me what? So you have 3 times 1, which is 3, over, you're going to have 2 times 2, which is 4, times 11, which is 44. So you end up with 3 over 44 as your simplified answer. Now, let me show you a faster way to get this. Let me get rid of this, and we're going to go even faster. So here's how I do it. I would look at this guy and say, okay, well, 33 and 9, in my head, I'm immediately thinking, okay, well, 33 is divisible by 3. 33 divided by 3 is 11. So I'm going to cross this out and just put 11. Then 9 divided by 3 is 3, so I'm going to cross this out and put a 3. So basically, I'm dividing this guy by 3 and this guy by 3, and I'm just putting the result there. 33 divided by 3 is 11. 9 divided by 3 is 3. It's the same thing as if I factored and canceled. So this guy would look at 20, and I would look at 5. Well, 20 divided by 5 is 4. So cross this out, you could put a 1 there, and cross this out, you could put a 4 there. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 20 divided by 5 is 4. It's a little bit faster than factoring. So now you just multiply 3 times 1, that's 3. And this is over 4 times 11, that's 44. Okay, let's look at one with three fractions involved. So we have 7 over 15 times 21 over 25 times 3 over 14. This is simplified, so is this, so is this. So what I would think about is 7 and 14 have a common factor of 7. So 7 divided by 7 is 1. 14 divided by 7 is 2. And then coming through here, now I have 21. Well, 21 is 7 times 3. Well, there's no 7 in any denominator now because I canceled this one away. But there is a 3. 21 divided by 3 would be 7. And then 15 divided by 3 would be 5. So I'm just canceling a common factor of 3 there. And then looking at this last one here, I have a 3. But this is a 5. This is 5 times 5. And this is a 2. So basically, I'm stuck. I can't do anything else. So this would end up being what? 1 times 7, which is 7, times 3, which is 21 over. You'd have 5 times 25. You can stop and do a vertical multiplication for that. I think a lot of you do know that 5 times 5 times 5 or 5 cubed is 125. So basically, it would be 125 times 2, which is going to be 250. So 21 over 250 would be your simplified answer. Again, if that's a little too fast for you, you can always stop and break things up. So you can say that this would have been, let me do this down here. So 7 over 5 times 3 and then times 7 times 3 over 5 times 5, and then times 3 over 7 times 2. If you need to do this, it's fine. So I'm going to cancel this 7 with this 7. I'm going to cancel this 3 with this 3. And basically, that's it, right? So I'm just left with, I'm going to put a 1 here. Again, if I left that off, then I would have to go back and say, okay, well, this canceled, this is a 1. So a lot of times, I leave that off because I know that. But for your scratch work, I think you should put it at this point so you're not confused. So this would be 1 times 7, which is 7, times 3, which is 21 over. You have 5 times 5 times 5. Again, that's 125 times 2, which is 250. So if you want to do it like this, because it's a little bit easier for you right now, then it's fine to break up the numbers completely and factor everything into the product of primes. In a lot of cases, as you move forward, you won't need to do that because it's just a little bit too time consuming. Okay, let's talk about the next topic here. So we're going to multiply whole numbers by fractions. So we have 6 times 1 third. So this would be what? You just take 6 and put it over 1. And you multiply it by a third, and you can cross cancel here. 6 divided by 3 would be 2, right? So basically, this is 2, and it's 2 times 1, which is 2 over. Again, you could write a 1 there. 1 times 1 is 1. So this is 2 over 1 or 2. And if you think about this, 6 times a third, 6 times a third would be what? Well, this is 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third. Let me make that 3 a little bit better. Plus 1 third plus 1 third, and then plus another 1 third. So if I had one third of a pizza plus another third plus another third, at this point right here, I'd have a full pizza. So this is one pizza. And then I'm doing the same thing over here. So this right here, this would be another pizza. 
So one plus one is two. So this tells me I should have two pizzas. Again, if you do this using the addition that we're going to learn about later, you would basically keep this denominator the same because it's called a common denominator. And you would just add the numerators. So one, two, three, four, five, six of those guys. You'd basically have a six up there. So you'd have six divided by three, basically, which is going to be two. Okay, let's take a look at seven times three over 49. So this would be seven over one times three over 49. And I'm going to say that 49 divided by seven is seven. So this is seven. So now basically, this is a one right here. So you can just forget about it. You could say it's one times three, which is three over one times seven, which is seven. But you could also say one times anything is itself. So you could just say, okay, this is going to be three sevenths. All right, here we have 19 over 15 times five over 38 times 36. So basically what I would do is treat this as 19 over 15 times five over 38 times 36 over one. Let's go through and see if we can cancel. So I know that 38 is 19 times two. So for this one, this would cancel with this. This would be a one and this would be a two. Again, 38 divided by 19 is two. 19 divided by 19 is one. Then here, 15 divided by five is gonna be three and five divided by five is gonna be one. Now for this one, as you get faster, you're not gonna say, okay, well, 36 divided by three is 12. And then you'll say, well, 12 divided by two is going to be six. You would do that in one shot. So in other words, what you could have done here, let me get rid of these cancelings here. You could say that 36 divided by six is gonna be six, and then basically cross those out because three times two is six. Now again, you can write this as a one, or as you move forward, you're just gonna realize that that's canceled, so it's one. So basically, this is a one, this is a one, one times one is one, and one times anything is itself, six over one is six, so this gives me a final answer that's just going to be six. All right, let's look at another one. So we have four over 15 times five over 24 times seven over 12 times negative four. Okay, so four over 15 times five over 24 times seven over 12 times negative four, I'm gonna write that over one. All right, let's think about what we can do here to cancel. So starting with the four, four divided by four is one, 24 divided by four is six. And then five divided by five is one, 15 divided by five is three. And then if we keep going, I have a seven here, 12 is going to be 2 times 2 times 3. This is 6. This is 3. So I can't do anything with that. All right. Then I have this negative 4. Let me write that as negative 1 times 4. And what you could do is divide 4 by 4, you get 1. And 12 divided by 4 would be 3. So looking at what I have left in the numerators, 1 times 1, you can forget about those. It's not going to change anything. Then times 7. So let's just start with 7. So basically 7 times negative 1, that is negative 7. And this is over. Down here, you have 3 times 6 times 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 6 is 54. And then times 1, that's still 54. So this would give me negative 7 over 54 as my answer. All right, let's take a look at two quick word problems. So we have Fred spent two-fifths of his $50 allowance on comics. How much did he spend? So this is typical. When you see two-fifths of this $50, so what you're going to do is take two-fifths and multiply it by 50. And so I'm going to cancel this 50 with this 5. 50 divided by 5 is 10. Again, you could put a 1 down there if you want. And then just multiply. 2 times 10 is going to be 20. Again, you can go over 1 if you want, but it's just going to be 20 at the end of the day. So when it asks how much money did he spend, the answer is going to be $20. Right? That's two-fifths of his $50. All right. Now we have a recipe requires one-half cup of sugar. If we only want to make three-fourths of the recipe, how much sugar is needed? So again, just take three-fourths and multiply it by one-half. And what is this going to give me? Nothing's going to be able to cancel here. This is simplified. This is simplified. Three and two, one and four. Nothing I can do. So just multiply three times one, that's three. Over four times two, that's eight. So basically, we could say that you would need three-eighths cup of sugar. 